What's up, Internet? John here from NextGen. Camilla here from NextGen. Apparently both from NextGen. <laughs> uh, our first Battle of the Builds contest has been up for a couple of weeks now, and we've got quite a few submissions. Uh, so we thought we'd share a couple of the ones that we like and um, yeah, maybe give you a better idea of what we're looking for for the contest. First up, we've got Alan Turtle Lancaster. Turtle is his nickname. Like the Ninja Turtles? Yeah. Cowabunga. <laughs> <laughs> So he's from Armprior, Ontario. He built a 212 closed back cab, three quarter inch Baltic birch, and all the parts and hardware purchased from next gen. Damn. A Conquest CNC <laughs> machine. Is it cheating to use a CNC machine though? How many I other people know. are gonna have a CNC I don't machine? Know. It's taking advantage of the tools at your disposal. I guess. Yeah, I guess that's true. Like some people would have a rotor and other people wouldn't. Some people have to do it with a jigsaw. Yeah, fair enough. CNC, it's a go. <laughs> <laughs> Approved. What do we got here? I, I guess, oh yeah, with the CNC, you have to have butt joints. Not that that makes a big deal, because butt mm. joints on a cab are fine, as long as they're mounted well. Nice joints, like dovetails and, and box joints look nice, but mm -hmm. functionally on a cab, it's if you not put good. If you put a decent amount of glue, and he, he had and uh, also screw them. holes pre-drilled. So glue screws, that's not gonna come up. And he obviously apart. filled the screw holes too. Yeah. So. It'll look just as nice and end up just as strong in the end anyway. That's the front. 3D printed logos. Oh, sexy. So the, uh, yeah. the, the turtle and his nameplate. So they're plastic made on a 3D printer, which is pretty cool. Also taking advantage of the tools at your disposal. Yeah. Because <laughs> we can't how many other people have a 3D printer. Man, I'm jealous of your tools, turtle. Yeah. I'm jealous. That looks nice. Even. Very clean. He actually he put the work into making sure this was straight as yeah. well. The screws are all balanced. And it isn't like yeah. crooked. The handle is upside the down. Handle's upside down. Maybe on purpose? Or is the maybe. cap maybe the cab's upside down? And he just took the pick no. Because oh. the handle's on the top part. Yeah. Weird. I wonder why. Maybe there's a reason for that. But that is a nice corner. Yeah. Did he have corners on it? He oh did. it does. But still. So he still, he put the effort in to make a nice clean seam, even though he's putting a corner on top. So that's nice. That's, like you said, attention to detail. And he included pics of these. Just to quote him here, I've included two pictures of the nylon dust cover that I also built myself. I'm employed full-time as a professional parachute rigger and have access to materials and several sewing machines. Awesome. Again, using tools at your disposal. Yeah. <laughs> nice. That's pretty cool. With I would say that handle. that doesn't quite count as part of the cab building contest, yeah, although maybe, it is pretty cool. Yeah, maybe not for the contest, but that looks awesome. It's, it's very, it's very clean. It's crisp. It's very professional looking. It's something that you, you would see in a store. Yeah, exactly. In a showroom or something. Yeah. Anything you don't like about it? I am jealous of his tools. <laughs> <laughs> That's high praise when the only thing you dislike is the jealousy of the tool. <laughs> uh, you know what? Actually, I'm a stickler for this. Uh, the grill cloth isn't quite straight. See that? Oh. Ah. Honestly, though, aside from that, it's pretty, pretty well perfect. All right. Next up, we have Randy Dash. Randy Dash. He's from Ottawa. We're from Ottawa. He built a 112 cab using West African Bubinga. I wonder if he actually traveled to Africa for that. <laughs> Somehow, I don't think so. Lame. Anyway, handle and speaker purchased from Next Gen. I like the wood. Me too. It's like it looks kind of like mahogany a little bit, mm -hmm. with uh, some cooler figure. Looks thick. Mm -hmm. yeah, we got. Yeah. Yep. Looks really thick. Those look thick. <laughs> That'd be heavy. I wonder if he's gonna stain these pieces inside to match the outsides. Oh, I don't know. Oh, that's cool. That looks cool. Now he didn't say that's. Is that gonna be the top? Uh, he, good, he, he didn't really say that looks like two different woods, but he didn't say. Or is know. this like this looks? Or is this, this does look like mahogany. It does, yeah. Mahogany or koa. He would he would he would have literally had to spade bit through it and then mm -hmm. throw and a rotor, rotor bit yeah. inside. That looks nice, man. Nice clear coat. I am a sucker for clear coated caps. I know we sell Tolex, but <laughs> <laughs> this, this, this looks so cool. It actually looks. Uh, it's really like evenly applied to. Yeah, it's yeah. not blotchy. He might have said he might have actually wet sanded it to smooth it out. Oh, maybe I'm giving it a polish. Yeah, looks really nice, man. 
Screws are Screws even. Screws are evenly, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Hey, that's oh, a guitar jack. 151. 151. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you get the plastic washer, though? I don't know. That's cool. I have a plastic washer. I have the same jack on my guitar. I have a plastic washer. No idea where it came from. Huh. Uh, I'm going to guess this is a Cannabis Rex because it doesn't have the goop on the edges. Oh. That's my guess. We'll find out if I'm right. I don't even know. <laughs> we so can go back through the order history and find front. out. You didn't leave a lot of room here. I actually like this. Like This is like chair backing, mm -hmm. like old school dining room chair. It's definitely creative. Where did you get this logo? Camden, New Jersey. Apparently. New Jersey. Are you from Camden, New Jersey originally, Randy? I know we don't ask for stories, <laughs> but I kind of, I kind of, when, when people Would email like, like a long story about how they built their cab, I kind of appreciate it. Yeah. So I gotta, I gotta be honest, this is actually my favorite one so far. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know I'm probably because I'm a sucker for clear coat. Me too. Like this actually, is yeah. beautiful to me. There's two things it's crooked, which it is difficult to apply. Yeah. Girl no, cloth is, like, girl uh, cloth is yeah. hard to work with. This, this is stuff even harder. harder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But also the other thing is it sticks out. Like it's it sticks out past oh, the front of the cab. A it, little bit. Yeah. He, he didn't quite give himself enough room for the set for That's the right. size of the That's right. baffle. I was like my favorite cab until I got to that last picture. I really like it because it's different. It's original. You don't typically hear of a yeah. You never using, see anything like this. Yeah. In the guitar Rubinga. Store. Next up we have Robert Bro. Hey, bro. Hey, bro. <laughs> <laughs> All right. He's from Buckhorn, Ontario. He built a 212 closed back using CV75s. So he built this cab to match his Mark V head. Uh, he used Baltic birch ply. I like oh, it so far. I kind of like it. Yeah, I like the, the 212 that's made to look like a 412. Mm -hmm. Recessed. Recessed. Uh, that's nice. I like that. It makes this, the whole side nice and flush. Kind of joints. Yeah, box joints. Box joints. So that's nice. I wonder if he has a jig for that or if he had to do like... Freehand it. I've, there's people that freehand it. Yeah. I think they're crazy. I wouldn't have the patience for that. If, I don't, if my jig ain't working, I don't do a box joint. <laughs> I do a butt joint. That's right. <laughs> uh, What's that? We got a little bit of tear out there. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, a uh, way to avoid that. Well, two things you could do. Um, you could paint it after you screw the holes. Just and to then, hide it. Even if it tears out, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Drill technique. Yeah. Go slower. Don't push as hard. Um, and if you tape, if you apply tape across, it should be able to hold it together. It'll actually hold it together, yeah. The angle baffle, the recessed handle. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All these, are, time, all these are nice Especially if it's by so hand. Far. Yeah. So yeah. I like, I like where this is going so far. Look how nice that is. And it runs flush with the mm -hmm. cab side. So. Pulls in the Tolex a little tighter. Yeah. On the inside. There's no screws on that back anywhere. What? That's interesting. I don't see any. Oh, yeah. They're there. They're, oh. ju they're just oh, not right, offset. Right. Okay. He actually so has them recessed into recessed. it. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome, actually. That looks really cool. And I didn't see it. I never would have thought to do that. <laughs> I, I never would have thought to do that. I've always... Uh, I've Put always, like a decorative washer. Yeah, I've always used the yeah. washer. I, I would just like paint a bunch of washers black. Yeah. The, the finishing washers. Cool. That looks really, really nice. What is with the upside down handle again? Uh, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm going to go grab a handle. I imagine people are putting it that way because they think it's, it'll give you more room to yeah, scoop underneath. Yeah. But you're still, even like that, you're, you're still going to have an edge there. on your wrist. Yeah. Which is not, it's not comfortable, man. If I was holding a 60-pound yeah, cap, you're like that. that's still putting pressure on the wrist. Yeah. When it's this way, even if you're holding it this way and you're doing the cab yourself. You at least have some room for your arm. Yeah, there's nothing uncomfortable about that. You're just... You, the flat part of your wrist is what's on the edge. Mm -hmm. Maybe if we're missing something, maybe if there's another reason to put them upside down on purpose. That we don't know about. That we don't know about. Let us, let us know. I wonder why the jack is so low on this one. That's a good question. Low to the floor. Because, like, to me, and again, uh, it'd be interesting to know what, what the thought was behind that. Because uh, to me, having it low to the floor makes it easier to kick. If it's, hard, it's, if it's, like, if it's more up here, mm -hmm. then you have a shorter cable. It's less likely to get bumped. See, I like that. It looks clean. It matches. I mean, he put he put the Mesa logos on there. He put, yeah, he put a lot of work into this. Um, personally, I don't like the uh, the Mesa logos because if it's handmade, I feel like that kind of takes away from your own work and your own craftsmanship. Because if you, you're gigging with that or you're taking it anywhere, you can be like, yeah, I built this, right? 
Oh, I see what you're saying. I, yeah, I yeah. This so like people are gonna say, well, no, because there's a Mesa logo right there. Yeah. So like, mo yeah, what you're saying is like most places you'll go, people will look at it and they'll just assume it's, it's a Mesa yeah, cab, exactly. and you don't have the kind of pride of being like, of, yeah, I, I built, I this. built this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Especially when you put, you know, some detailed work into it. My beef with having a logo on the cab that's like of a company is if you ever sell the cab, strip mm -hmm. that logo off because that could be misleading to a customer. And even if you say, oh, I built it myself and I just put the logo on there, mm -hmm. that person will buy it. They might resell it and leave the and logo on and say of. it's a real mess of cab. So, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's a tricky, you know. Yeah. I think it's cool because it looks, it looks like a 412, like an angled 412, but it's the size of his head. So it's not like overly too huge. Yeah, that'd be perfect you for know. the stage. And I mean, 212, you still get a lot of power. You still out of get that a thing. lot out of 212, yeah. And again, I'm a stickler. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, no. But when I zoomed in here, I noticed the grow cloth is not quite straight. People are going to hate me. Yep. I'm, I'll be like the grow cloth Nazi. Speaking on that, what I did just notice. He didn't use any screws for the grill cloth. On the front. Which I really like. Mm. But what's interesting is you look at the, the Mark V. They used screws and decorative <laughs> washers for that panel. So this time it doesn't match. So I'm like, ah! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, last one for the day. This one's from Thomas Ross in Wetaskiwin, Alberta. It's a 212 open back cab with Celestian G12 35 XCs. I like it already. <laughs> This looks pretty awesome though. Dang. What kind of wood is that? We didn't we didn't get a story. It looks like pine, we like I guess. we we didn't say to, to send us a story with your your cap submission. Yeah, but we like but, stories. But we like stories. It's nice to know what the, what the we thought like was. To know. What kind of wood it is. Yeah. The history a little bit of the cab. Should get a nice. locking jacks. It's an interesting choice actually. Mm. On an amp. If you're walking by. I get over it. the cable, it won't come out. Yeah, but you could like pull your whole amp yeah. off the cab. Yeah. I feel like the cable would get wrecked maybe before the amp would fall <laughs> before off. Before the amp gets pulled off. Yeah, because the amps are pretty heavy. Is that a uh, uh, little bit of stain missing and maybe a little bit of... Uh, oh, yeah, blade burn. Table saw burn. Check that out, yeah. Oh. A little, a little bit, bit of bit burn. burn from the router. Some slippage. Some slippage. This is not easy to do. No, this is not like a beginner's... <laughs> yeah project right Man. And that's the thing about clear coated cabs and heads and stuff is you're gonna see that those burn marks and everything so you gotta take extra care if you don't want those visible see he did the same the same kind of grill on the back on the back those look good yeah i don't see any blade any uh any bit slippage in on the back here i like the black with this color yeah. wood yeah it matches those are really nice uh, uh yeah nice corners Look, that one right there is mitered. Yeah, you mitered the, the front, front pieces. And then he's got a separate piece on the corner here. I wonder what the joint is like between these two pieces. So I like this because this, this shows a lot of advanced techniques. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it's really nice, even though there were a few errors here and there. Yeah, really that's, nice. that's still a lot of, uh, a lot of technical work, uh, yeah. handy work that you got to be experienced to be able to pull that off. One thing I noticed on this cab, mm -hmm. as I noticed on all of the cabs. Uh-oh, here we go. Grow oh. cloth. Crooked and loose. Crooked glow cloth is uh, an aesthetic error. Mm. It doesn't really affect the sound. Loose glow cloth could create problems with the sound. So True. Tough one. That's it for now. Thanks to everyone who submitted a cab so far. I know we did not show all of the submissions that we've gotten so far. We only showed just a few highlights. Mm. Uh, but there's a lot more, and there, I'm sure there's more coming. Just a reminder, if you haven't submitted your build yet, You've got a long time, but you've got to get it in eventually. Until next time, you stay classy, Canada. <laughs> That's your sign off? Yeah. What does she say in the movie? Uh, thanks, thanks for stopping by. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for watching. If you have sales related questions, please visit our website at nextgenguitars.ca. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for future videos. I really like this, these portholes. Yeah, these are beautifully done. Let's give it another yeah. zoom. And the uh, the two types of wood there. Look at it. <laughs> Get close. Ah! Ah, getting sucked <laughs> to the